Hey guys, May Flom here, and you know, this gift, I mean, a little pink ribbon on silver, I think that's fun and kind of a girly way to celebrate, but you know, would it be so hard to kind of amp this up a little bit? Not really. I mean, yes, I suppose if I spend a bunch of time digging through just the right size, just the right shape things, it could take me a good while, but guess what? I've got a tool in my toolbox, and all I'm going to need is some white cardstock. Yes, I'm serious, and yes, I'm talking scan and cut. So let me show you how I've been quickly using my scan and cut and just plain white paper to amp up my gift wrap game. So step one, know what size of package you're working with. Me, I know mine's about seven by seven, so I know I'm going to want it smaller than that. And then you're going to go in, I strongly recommend playing around with and knowing your options. Now, in this machine, I've got all kinds of things like trees and Santa faces. I've got all kinds of holly. There's fun things that I cut multiple parts out. But I said that this particular time, I'm looking for quick, I'm looking for easy. So guess what? Way down here, I have this section and my machine has got beautiful snowflakes. Well, guess what? I think, wait, is that the one I want? I want this one. There we go. I think a snowflake about, I'm gonna go just a little bigger than five inches, maybe five and a half. There we go. That's perfect, but I want more. So I'm gonna go in the basics here. And guys, everything I'm doing right now, this is just all in the basic section of the scan and cut. I mean, the snowflake, that's more of a deluxe pattern for the 650W machine that I have, I believe. But this is all basic. Look, I'm picking things out and I want to cut them. And for me, for the holidays especially, I don't want it to be especially difficult. I don't want to be working on stuff and thinking, oh my goodness, this is so hard. You know, there's so much going on, it's so hard. I don't want that at all. So I'm gonna do 1.5 inches high, 3.25 inches wide, two tags. The two is gonna make sense in a minute. And then I'm gonna take one of these tags like so, and just move it to the side. And I'm gonna go into here because remember what I keep saying, easy, easy, easy. Well, I've got all of these little sayings and things, so I'm just gonna scroll down here and find one that's appropriate for the holidays. I'm going with joy, and I'm not even gonna resize it, and I know you're thinking, hey, that's huge. Yes, I'm gonna push this button up here at the top. Okay, and that brings me to this screen. If I push this right here, it's gonna bring me to the resizing screen, and I can size this down, 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 until it will fit inside. And I can click somewhere else. So like I clicked over on this just so I could see what that joy was doing. And I'm gonna go ahead and say okay, because that brings me back to this screen where I can trash things, edit things, or this button right here, it'll let me re adjust where that little joy is. And the reason I keep clicking on other things is so that I can see the joy and if I go in here and super, super zoom here, I can look over at Joy and see that it technically is okay. However, I'm gonna say okay. Oops, I went and bumped that back down. Uh, it's just a little too big for me. In my mind, that Joy, when I actually go to cut that out, it's gonna be just a little too tight. So I just made that a little bit smaller, but otherwise I'm happy with everybody. I've got my paper down here ready to go. Everybody looks good. Everybody's on the mat. I'm happy with the sizes of everything. I'm gonna go ahead and tell my scan and cut to cut. Guess what guys? We are ready to assemble. Just need to let this cut out. And just like that, we're ready for assembly. So I've got the one that has joy, and I've got a little piece of acetate that I cut out manually because I need it a little bit smaller than the actual tag. I don't like the acetate to go all the way to the edges. So I went ahead and took care of that. And then I will just take some foam adhesive. And for this kind of a project, it would probably work better in general to use foam tape versus foam dots, just because you do have to make sure it's nice and sealed. However, because this is such a teeny, teeny, tiny space, I decided that I thought that little foam squares would work just fine because there's a lot of just, you know, really, really small, small spaces here to fill. Now, along these very, very thin edges even, we will have to make sure there's a nice seal. The reason we need a seal is we can't 
fill this up with lovely embellishments until it is all sealed up. So this part I'm going to go ahead and cut. This is probably the longest part of this whole process. If you did not want to make a shaker, it would save you a considerable amount of time. I'll tell you that right now. But you know what? It can be worth it because the shaking of the little beads and sequins and things is so much fun on a gift. I can't help myself. I still do it. So as you can see, it's okay if the adhesive, and that's another reason I wanted to do this because a lot of times I know people will ask me if it has to be perfect or if it has to be just so. It really does not, guys. The key thing here on these shakers, it's not so much perfection as it is that it is solid, that there are no gaps where your little bits and pieces can escape. That's the important thing, okay? It's not so much if it looks pretty on the inside as it is can things escape. And if things can escape, well then yes, we're gonna have some problems. But as long as everybody is locked up here, you're gonna be just fine. And you might notice some of the areas, I'm going ahead and leaving more adhesive. I'm going ahead and leaving, you know, like here, um, I might cut in a little bit or, you know, I might not have it be just so. In fact, some of these areas like right here, I could go in here and add another square uh, on the inside to really make sure that that area, so when it comes through, I only want to see the little goodies in the shaker. I, that's all I want to see, but I also want to make sure there's no gaps where things can slide out. So kind of a balancing game, but it's one that's worth it. Once you're all the way done, you're just going to, oh, first, silly, silly me, we're going to get our goodies here and whichever ones you're wanting to put. I'm not going to put any buttons in this one just because it's so, so small. So I'm just going to grab for the sequins and the beads in this particular one. You could fill it up with anything you like and you can fill it as full as you want or you could leave it mostly empty. That's totally your call, but as full as you want. And then once you're happy with it, you want to leave things very nice and still. You're just going to carefully peel all of this off. Once I have it all peeled off, I can place my other tag that we cut out right over the top. You hear that little shake? Oh, I just love how that turned out. And it's so full of color and it's pretty. And I can save this joy that's cut out. I can save that for another package. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to assemble. Okay, I've got my big snowflake. I'm utilizing hot glue for two reasons. Number one, this is a pretty sturdy paper and it's a sturdy gift underneath. So I'm not worried about the heat or the glue itself. And then what I'm going to do with my little joy tag, I am just going to hot glue up here at the tip and tuck it underneath like so. So there will only be, so that'll be loose at the bottom. The tip is what has got all the adhesive on it. And I bring up the leftovers because you never know when leftovers are going to work out in another project. And case in point, I was working actually on a Valentine's project. I know, I know, ahead of myself. But I have a couple of pink hearts here. I also actually have an acetate snowflake that's got hearts on it and is the right colors. And these are from other projects and they didn't quite work out the way I intended them. And I bring that up here, guys, because you just really never know how something's going to work out or how you might end up using it later. So first thing I'm going to do here with my ribbon, this is a little trick that I like to do when I've got the hot glue out anyhow, is control where those ribbon little bits and pieces roll. When I've got something like this where I've got that joy and I don't want the work of my shaker to get upstaged by everything else, I will kind of take control of the situation by putting a few little dollops of hot glue here and there and uh, directing that ribbon to be, oh, you know, just a little prettier in a little different way than maybe it was going to do naturally. So I've got that down now. And I'm thinking that this would be really cute right in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue over that center knot. Now it will show through since this is acetate. It's going to show through. But I'm not going to stress it for a couple reasons. Number one, I can always put 
something like these little hearts that I was just talking about right over the center. But I can also do something like, oh, I don't know, grab a button. I have enough of them, for goodness sake. I love my buttons. And in this case, I think that is just the way to go. Now, if you're noticing, that's kind of lifting off and being a bit of a, a pain there. Yes, it is, and that's okay, because I'm going to press this button down, and when I do so, I'll be able to better hold this into place, and I may just need to hold that for a few seconds while the hot glue dries. Then I can take these, if I want, and add a couple of them in here, but guys, I just love how this packaging turned out, and it's so super quick and easy. I've got my joy shaker. I've got my snowflakes. I'm thinking about the hearts. I'm thinking I would like... And no, it does not say who it is for. That's actually intentional. It's actually for one of my daughters. And they were bugging me about who gets the silver one? We think it's a Lego. Who gets it? And I don't want them to know, but I know who it's for. So they're just going to have to wait until Christmas morning. Well, I hope that I've inspired you. You know, if you've got your scanning cut or, you know, getting out, if you don't have, if you have punches that you don't use ever or shapes or little leftover bits and pieces, well, get them out and use them and put a few fun little touches on your holiday gifting. There is still time. We can do this. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Any questions, comments, requests, anything at all, feel free to leave me a comment on YouTube. I will see you next time.